Yeah, it just indicates that it's being rec recorded. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, um, MMF1 is finished product, so you can just type MMF1 on the command bar right there. One, good. Hit enter. Very nice. Now you type RFRT1000. Dash 172. And then industry sector is retail. And this is a finished product. Later, you are going to be creating a semi finished product and raw material. At the time, you are going to be using different function. But right now, it's good. Okay. So hit uh, continue. And then choose basic data one, MRP123. And yeah, work scheduling and click on the green check mark. Very nice. The plant is DL00. You can look up and choose okay. the Dallas plant. Good. Very good. And hit, uh, hit the green check mark. Good. Now you are on basic data one. That's the one facet. And mm -hmm. then if you Fill this out, then you're going to move on to MRP1, and then 2, and 3, and then work scheduling. That's how it works. Uh, now, now enter description, which front, standard bike, and your identification number is 172. So, yeah, 172. Very nice. And then base unit of measure, it's a each, EA, right. And then material group is bikes. That's a very good. And then a division, bike, BI. And then we have Click on bike, right? Okay. And then scroll down and you will see gross weight. Mm -hmm. 8,510. Good. And that uh, weight is 8,510. The same. Sometimes there could be difference, but in this case, it's the same. And weight unit is gram, G instead of a kilogram or some other uh, measure. Okay. Very good. And then you can now click on MRP1. So go to the tab, write basic data one. Yeah, you can just click on that and navigate to MRP1, click on the MRP1. Okay, do I have to hit save? No, not at this. If you hit save, what happens is you're gonna go back to the initial function so okay. you can create some hassle. So just click on MRP1. Okay. Okay, very good. On MRP1, um, we are going to first go to MRP type. That's, uh, you see the oh. red asterisk key, MRP type, and that's M1, good. Okay. Click, or if you want to understand what M1 is, you can click on that uh, icon. So there are many MRP type, and M1 is uh, fixing type one. So that's uh, what we want to use for this finished product. Okay. And then we want to go to planning time fence, right? And that's uh, uh, one. Okay. And then MRP controller, there's only one MRP controller. So that's a zero, zero, zero. In reality, we could have multiple controllers, but in this okay. fictitious situation, we have only one MRP controller, zero, zero, zero. And then we go to um, lot size. You see lot size? Mm -hmm. Lot size means how many am I going to make, right? So if you look at here, dy is dynamic lot size, meaning it changes all the time. ex means lot for lot order quantity. In other words, say if you are making 10 at a time, then 
10 is the last size and it's going to continue. And we are going to use this um, EX method. Okay. Okay. And then minimum last size below that is 10. So in other words, we are going to make 10 bikes at a time. For example, if you go to like a, a manufacturing uh, site, you know, say uh, Hyundai Sonata, you know, they can make 10 Sonata at a time if they start to work on it. And mm -hmm. then after that, they may change it to say Elantra and make another 10 of them and then move on to the other places. And they are not going to make, say, five of them and then stop there and then go to Elantra, make three of them and come back, a five a Sonata again like that. But they have this last size so that their production is more efficient. Um, yeah, th that's what it means by uh, minimum last size here. If you have done that now, uh, go to MRP2. MRP2, and mm -hmm. there uh, we are going to first go to procurement type. It's already uh, specified as X. If you want to check what that is, you can click on it and see the icon. And X means both procurement times, meaning in-house and external pro procurement. So they are going to get things uh, in-house and out outside of the uh, the plant. In other words, they are going to get raw materials or other parts from suppliers, or they are going to make their own parts in, in, in the factory. They are going to source both type of the uh, supplies and parts to themselves. Okay. Okay. And then go to in-house production. Um, you may have to scroll down. Right, in-house production, one day, so one. And then schedule, uh, scheduled margin key, that's uh, zero, zero, 001, again. Okay. Um, yeah, so we are going to use zero, zero, 001. And then um, safety stock. So in other words, how many uh, bikes are we going to carry at all times, right? in case there is a surge in demand or there is a, a disruption in supply, so you cannot work. So then you have to have some kind of safety stock or inventory to manage and mitigate the risks. And safety stock here, 100, 100 of them, they are going to maintain. And that's MRP2. And let's go to MRP3. And there, let's click on stretch group and click on that icon. And again, there's another icon there. So click on that search icon. Okay. And we are going to use 10, make to stock production. Make to stock is you produce first and then sell. But sometimes, you know, what you do is you receive order and then start to produce. That's a make to order. Um, so make to stock method is being used in this case. So click on, on that. Good. And then check green check mark. Very nice. And then if you have done that, now we go to availability check. Uh, scroll down. Right. And it's white to, so can you click on that? Mm -hmm and then search box and zero two individual requirements okay. double click and then let's go to work scheduling okay at work scheduling you see a production supervisor prdn supervisor under yeah there and that's a zero 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 the same, the same supervisor. Again, we could have multiple supervisors, but uh, in this case, we have only one. And production schedule profile, um, below that, click on that search box. And it's 10, only one, right? Release and schedule. 
So it happens right away. Okay. If you have done that, now is the time for you to hit save. Now you are yeah. done with production. Okay. Right. Now you have saved it. So exit. Right. So you have now saved it and you want to look at if you have um, saved it all right, then you can go to uh, display the function. So let's go to logistics okay. under there. Yeah, expand it. And then what uh, material? Oh, no, no, no. Production, actually. Sorry. Okay. About that. Production. Okay. And then what tree master data? And um, material master, material, uh, and then we want to see display. So if you look at uh, five, the fifth folder down there, that's display, mm -hmm. right? And the mm zero three is display current. Click on that. Okay. And now click on the uh, search icon. Very good. Now material, click on material bar, the third bar. Third, oh, okay. uh, right. And then asterisk key, asterisk key. Um, asterisk. Oh, the asterisk? Yeah. Um, where is that? It's a number eight for me, so shift oh, number okay. eight. Okay, and then uh, dash 172. Hit enter. So then it shows that you have created RFRT 1000-172. So if you use that function, it will display all the products that you have created that ends with 172. Okay. You know, even you can look at, oh, you know, my friend, so and so, he, her, her identification number is one seventy three. Then you can type, you know, asterisk key dash one seventy three. Then everything will show up like that. So by doing this, you can check. So double click on it. Good. Now hit continue. Okay. And then, what dimensions do you want to see? Right. So I want to see MRP one dimension only. And then I uh, hit green check mark and DL00 and then continue. Right, now you can see MRP1, RFRT172, these are the things entered there. Okay. So exit, please. Another thing that you can do is you can make changes. For example, if you have made any mistake, mm. oh, you know, uh, I entered 8,510 gram. It, it was supposed to be 8,500 gram. I need to change that. Then you can go to now change folder. Right. And then MM02 or immediately double click on it. And it says, you know, I want to make changes immediately. And uh, uh, hit continue. This is a product that we know changes. And I click on MRP1 and uh, check mark green. Yep. Okay. And DI00. Good. Hit enter. And okay, now you are on MRP1. Scroll down, please. Oh, so this is about minimum lot size. So say you, you want to change to 11 here. You don't have to right now, but you can make changes here. So if you make mistakes, don't uh, panic. You can you know always make changes uh, so you can come back using change function. Okay. And that's the same with MRP or routing or any other thing. So mm -hmm. if those mistakes happen, try to use this change function. But if you if you choose this mm02 it's 
it pertains to product creation. It's not okay. about routing, routing or MRP. There are other change function that pertains um, pertain to the specific area. So at that time you're going to use, but the structure, the line of thinking is the same. Okay. Okay. Exit, please. So now you are here. Now, can you please open the instruction manual that I I posted on Canvas? Um, yes. Right, one planning execution in SIP ERP. Okay. Click on that. Maybe you want to download it. Good. Open it. And scroll to section 1.1. So lab 1.1. 1 .1. Scroll, keep, keep going. Good. So section 1.1 is what we are doing. You have just completed 1.11. So scroll down, please. And this is what we did. You have just created RFRT 1000-172. And double, uh, down, uh, scroll down. And here, oh uh, yeah, go keep going. Here, what, what, uh, what is different from manual is instead of choosing DL172, which is your identification number, we chose DL00 because we have only one plant for Dallas available. So that's what we did. But uh, the other things are pretty much the same. So scroll down. Yeah, so, so this is how I gave you instruction how to enter things. Okay. And scroll down. There was a uh, basic data, and this is uh, MRP one data. Scroll down. This is MRP two data, and so forth. That's what I did. So, so you know, if you, however, there is some discrepancy. Uh, this, you know, this video tutorial that I made was using the current system, but these screenshots and instruction was made. Uh, you know, a few years ago. So there, there are discrepancies. So what is accurate is my video tutorial, uh, but you can look at the manual so that you understand what we are doing and look at those things. That's what you can do to go through lab one and two and three. Okay, so that was just the first part of the first lab, right? Right. Okay. So you now have to create RFRT 2000-172. Okay. Um, that's 1.1.12 1 or 13 that you have to do. And 1.2 is creating semi-finished product. You have to create one product there. And then 1.3 is raw materials. You have to create two raw materials, tube and, and wheel. So uh, those are, so in, after finishing lab one, you need to have five, um, uh, products that you have created. Okay, so how exactly do I like um, submit or like show you that I have? Yeah, so that display function that I used, huh. if you use that, right now you have only one, mm -hmm. RFRT 1000-172, but if you successfully create all the products, you will have five of them, and you can just screenshot that. Okay. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Um, uh, for lab two and three, just go, if you finish the last step of each lab, then just uh, screenshot it and uh, put, put them in, in PowerPoint file and then, you know, upload them along with what you learned from the lab. Okay. Yep. Okay, sounds good.